Hi, welcome to my latest video. Well, in this one, I'm going to show you a product that I bought. It's the Brady BMP21 printer. It has special features in it so that you can use it to really do a good job labeling cables, network cables in particular, but you can also use it for any cables that you want where you have repetitive patterns of it. It has a lot of advanced features to it. I'll put the features up on the screen here right now on the side and you'll see it has quite a bit of capability. There are many different types of labels you can get for it, different types and different sizes of those types. So I'll be talking about that a little bit as we get into it a little bit more. It does come with the standard one that is used primarily for network cables. And uh, it puts cloth-like labels that are properly printed and will give you more than just a simple number. You can put down exactly what section they're cabling to, what, uh, which one of the distribution panels, for example, I'm going to put on mine, and a few other things that make it really nifty. So we're going to open this up, see what it comes with, and then I'll show you how it works, at least in a basic form. Stick around and you'll be able to see me using it on some of the new cables that I'll be using in my new upgrade to my network rack, which includes some new devices uh, in following videos. So let's get started. Okay, here's the printer in its plastic package, one of those that you have to cut open. It looks like it has a manual on the inside here, but I like the manuals that I found online for it because I think this is just a quick manual. But let's open it up and see what's actually in here. I have to use the scissors for this one. And here's what I believe is the quick start manual. And then the printer itself. I'll open that up and then take the cartridge out by making sure that's open and you push this button on the back here. It comes with cloth, nylon cloth, three quarter inch, and it can hold like four lines of text on each label. And you can wrap that around the cable itself. This particular one looks like it has uh, a full one, whatever the, the length is, but it doesn't look like it's, it's been shorted anyway, so it's a full cartridge. Now, the batteries, I think I have to come back here and pull this out. Yep. Squeeze it on both sides, pull that out, and now I need six AA batteries in order to bring this to life. Okay, so I have six alkaline batteries over here, brand new, and I'll put these in and see where we can go from there. It came on already. I guess I must have been pressing the power button by accident. This is the power button right here. Let me power that off and let me uh, put the cartridge back. It must have the cartridge back before you can initialize it. Okay, now let's power it on now and see what we got. Let me read through the manual real quick and find out what I need to do. And uh, then we'll start making some labels for some cables and see what it looks like. Well, I just spent a lot of time going over this and studying the manual and then playing around with it a little bit. Learned a lot. It's actually fairly user-friendly, in my opinion, compared to other label printers that I have and some that I really like. So let me show you what we got here. The first thing I would do is to go into the menu. There's this button that says Menu. Now, if you see something that's in orange, you've got to hit this double chevron thing down in the lower corner here. Okay, that's what you have to do. That's what that means. You've got to hit that and hold it down to hit that. But for the basic menu, you just hit this Menu button. I would recommend that after hitting this, you go down and change the language, if you don't already have it set to English, change the units, make sure that it's whatever one is appropriate to you. I use inches here. We are in the United States. We're sort of behind the times when it comes to measurement capability with, you know, meters versus inches. And I would set the clock. So the setting of the clock would be things like the date, the time, the clock format, you know, how you want the time displayed the time format, date format, and that's important if you decide that you ever want to make labels, which is one of the options, to put the date and time and or time on the label itself. You obviously want to have that accurate, so that's important to do. And I would also go ahead and, and check the cut mode. The cut mode is important because it decides if you want to have it automatically create a sequence of labels for you. For example, I'm doing cables, and let's say I want cables that go from position 1 through 24 going into the distribution panel, labeled by that. Well, when you pick the cut mode, it allows you, if you're picking a sequence of labels to be created by the printer, do you want it to cut between each label, which is where it would stop and wait for you to cut it, and it senses that. So then once it senses that you've cut it, press the two buttons on the ends here, then it will automatically move to the next label, or do you want it to wait till it prints them all 
and then it'll be up to you to actually manually cut it, let's say with a pair of scissors. So that's one of those things. I like the in-between labels. The zero. Well, this is important if depending on what you prefer. Now, it's not viewed properly in terms of the screen here. The screen doesn't have the same resolution as the label will have. Normally, you see a zero as something very similar to an O, just a little bit thinner, right? Well, I like to use the slashed zero. And with the slashed zero, when it shows a zero, there'll be a cross through it diagonally. And that helps me recognize the difference between a zero and an O. So it's something that I like to do. Not, some people may not be comfortable with that. Backlight time, well, you can change the time on it. I didn't touch it. You can actually set it to always on like it is now, or you can set it to come down in increments of a few seconds. So probably a good one to pick is probably 15 seconds. So I'll go ahead and set that. If you want to go backwards in the menu, sometimes the menu button works, sometimes the, uh, the backspace or delete button, clear button works. It's a little bit inconsistent, but you get used to it after a while. I still find that the menuing system on this is pretty good, especially since it has certain key buttons here that are easy to get to that you would normally change on a regular basis. Notice how the screen went out as a result of me putting a timer on it. A lot of other options here, like creating specific symbols. That's an, an interesting one, because if you pick symbols, you can have all sorts of electrical symbols to choose from. So let's say Datacom, for example. I won't go through them all. Here are some of the Datacom symbols that you could pick. You know, things like a phone, a phone with a plus, various forms of PCs and other peripherals, a phone off the hook, a camera, different kinds of printers and PCs and network and the basic phone itself. That would actually put those symbols in a pretty good resolution on the label itself, if for whatever reason you, th you feel that that's something you'd like to do. Okay, and then if you're international, you can go into different uh, international types of characters. I won't do that. You can create barcodes with it. That's interesting if you decide to barcode all your equipment, which I've been thinking about doing, then get myself a barcode scanner to keep my inventory up. This is particularly important with all the spare parts that I have because I have multiple processors that I'm not using. It might be nice to just barcode them so I can then quickly identify them with a barcode scanner when I'm inventorying what I have on stock. And we already talked about the other one. Oh, the file is important. If you have a particular setup for a label that you like, well, you can save it. You can save that setup for future use. There are 12 spots though. So when you go to save a setting, let's say we want to open a setting, you will see one through 12 listed here. Right now I have nothing saved, but you could pick a spot to save a particular template that you like, a particular type of label. It's more than a template, it's the actual label as it would print out. And if it's one that's a sequential one, then it would have the sequential notation in it as well. There's only 12 spots and you can overwrite them. And it doesn't matter what name you pick because when you put something into a slot, well, one of the things that you would do at that point is assign a name to it. You could have the same name through all 12 spots if you'd like, it doesn't really matter. See, um, and that's about it. Those are about all the different options that I would make sure that you double check to make sure that they're the way you like. So now let's print a label. I have a cable here. It is a CAT7 cable. It's one of the ones that I would use potentially as a new jumper in my new configuration of my rack downstairs. But let's say I want to identify where it's going to plug on one of my distribution panels. Well, what I decided to do is I labeled my distribution panels. So let's get to that. And let's say I wanted to create a label that would go on this cable and it's one that would wrap around it and repeat the information that identifies what that connector is for around that cable. So if I go ahead and uh, type in here, let's say I pick my distribution panel one. So I will say D and I like to say dash just for the heck of it, dash one. I'll give it a space. And then which one of the actual jacks that I have on that distribution panel, the two distrib panels I, distribution panels I have, have 24 jacks. So I will then say J. Let's say, I won't put a dash on this one. I'll say J05. Uh, now notice the zero in the screen here looks like an eight. But when it prints out, it would be a zero with a cross through it diagonally. So let's say that's a label that I want. Well, all I have to do at this point, if I, that's the one I want to print out, is hit print. Now, let's see if I cut it. I didn't check the length of it though, so that might be an issue. I push both sides in, and I only have two copies of the label on the label itself, which may be enough or it may not. All I have to do to change that is to come into the label type 
I have it set for wire marker, right, which is what I've created here. I have it only set for three quarters of an inch. Probably the better way of doing it is to make it one inch. So I'll go ahead and set it for that right now. So any future labels I make, it'll give more repetition of each of the labels. But this will probably work for demonstration purposes. So now that I have this, I could take the label off of its backing. And it has a backing that sort of stands out to the side a little bit. Let's take this off. And again, this is really cloth. I wound up folding a corner, that's not good. But anyway, that's the part that's gonna start to roll around. Let me take the cable. Let's say if this is the cable I want to go into distribution panel one, jack five, I would just pick this, start as close to the middle as I can, and then just wrap this around. The idea is to wrap it around a little bit more than that. So this label would ideally would have been better off if I had made it longer because that lead in the blank spot is a fixed length, but whatever's left will allow me to wrap around it. So let me, I'll show you that in a minute. Now that I have it set for a, a one inch rather than three quarters, you'll see it a little bit better. Now let me show you the other way. I'm going to be doing a bunch of these. This is just one jumper I may be using. I will have a whole series of ports that I want to cover. Let's say I want to create all the labels for ports 20 through 26. Well, how would I do that? All I have to do is the same exact definition that I have here. And what I will do is I'll back up to where the J is. Got rid of the number that's on there, but now I want to hit the serial. It's above menu. It's in the orange letters. I got to hit the two chevrons here in the bottom. So I hit that, hold it down and hit this. And it goes into a menuing system. It's asking me the start number, the increment and the end number. Now, what did I say? 20 to 24, let's say that's five labels, right? So I'll start with 20, okay, cross through to zero. I will arrow down here. I will leave it at increment of one. It's zero one, that zero has a cross through it. And then the end number will be, let's say 24. Now, if I hit enter, that locks it in. And what I do at this point is, and I have it set so that it'll stop in between each of the labels. So if I then hit print, watch what happens. It's printing number one and it stops. I then cut it by pushing the two end things on it. It detects that. That pops it out and now it prints the second one. Then I cut it. The third one. The fourth one. And then the last one sits in there even after I cut it. I have to pull that last one out. Now what do I have? I have a series of labels. D1-24-23-22-23-24. I hope. Yep, and dash 20. So now I have the five labels that I created for five cables, or at least five ends of a cable. So let's start with the first one. I'll pick the D1-24 and I'll put that. And now notice that I have a total of five different replications of the same thing. And this is a better one for this size diameter of this cable. One inch is pretty good, I think, for most cable actually for networking. Let's take this one off. I'll pick the other end of it and I will set, start with the blank part, try to center it on there and then wrap it around. And what's happening when I do that? It's wrapping around the same value multiple times on the cable which makes it really easy for me to identify which cable this is. So that's the multi. There are a lot of options with this. As a matter of fact, one of the things I'll probably do, probably not tonight, but tomorrow, I will take it and use it on my electrical box. It actually has an option. Let me, uh, let me back out of this. Let me go back to the menu. If I pick the type of, the type of uh, label that I want, well, one of the things in addition to the wire marker is right above it, I go to panel residential and I can take that to actually produce a whole series of vertical laid out labels that'll be continuous all the way down from the top of the panel to the bottom of the panel from my electrical box. And I can go ahead and then identify each of the breakers and some of them are dual breakers, right? Some of them have two gangs to them is what they call it. And I can then pick that and this goes through and walks you through the process. But I think for purposes of this demonstration, I've demonstrated what I wanted to do. This is a very good, sturdy, you know, weight, weighty type 
label producer that really is custom to electrical and networking. I also went ahead and bought, it's not from Brady, it's from a third party, but it looks good to me. Rather than buy the Brady one, which was much more expensive, I bought this one as a storage box. Really hard shell to it. I could put this in here, let me turn it off, and I can put it in here and make sure that it's nice and secure. And then I have room over here to put whatever. I could put extra labels, I could put, you know, a power adapter, which I've ordered for this. I don't have one now. There is a power adapter that's available for this that would plug in right over here on the printer. You could also get, I mean, I have regular batteries in here if you wanted to get uh, one of their battery packs, right? You could, but they're, very, they're quite expensive and I don't necessarily see the, the need for that. If I was using this a lot more for like my job, then I might do that. But for purposes of what I'm going to be using it for, I won't be using it that often. But when I do use it, it will come in very handy. And there are many different types of labels that this can do. I'll leave it up to those who watch this video to take a look at the manual. This one talks about most of them, but the online manual, which I'll put the link to down at the bottom of the video, shows all of the options that you could do with this printer. And it's very clear in terms of stepping you through what you have to do. One, two, three, four, whatever you have to do to get that option to work. Okay, that completes this uh, review of the Brady BM21 label printer. And uh, the next time you see this being used it will be me as I set up my new network rack downstairs. Thanks for watching.